got it. Oh, I've ripped it out of his mouth. Look at the size of that, man. Look at that beast. Oh, oh it's so visual. Love it. Oh, don't get me around those doors. Look at that, would ya? They're just fighting over it, eh? Look at them. Mid-water, I'm watching. There's a huge brim there, too. Yep. Yep, I'm on. Good, good fish. That's a better fish. Oh, I can't keep it out of that pile. It's a big brim, this one. Yeah! Yep. It's just such a perfect imitation of a little shrimp. There's not a lot of little shrimp profiles around like it. I'm throwing this new little MMD prawn, this soft prawn. Yep. Oh, that took it, man. It took it. <laughs> I just saw it swim off with a sore lip. These really big brim, they've definitely got something that I can appreciate. I love it, eh? Look, I can see the brim in there. They're tucked right up hard against that keel, some of the big ones. Nice, lightly weighted plastic. It's not too much to spook them, which I really like. And they're just coming out, they'll watch it, grab it, and go back in. Yep, here we go. Little floody. <laughs> God, they're gorgeous, aren't they? Look at that tail. There's a 35 forker, I reckon. Yep. Watching the tick in the line again. Yeah, take a look at that. Straight down, no problem for the hook up because the, these hooks are super sharp. Yeah, let's see that there. Look at that little prawn there. That's the lightly weighted one. Be able to see that little weight in there. The trick around these boats is throwing it into that shadowed side. Keep this going. With these new MMD soft prawns, it's making very easy work of these brim this morning. I want to take you through exactly what I'm doing. I'm just jumping ship to ship, fishing these things super lightly weighted. So this is these are the really lightly weighted ones. I'll give you a look. They come in a couple of different sizes. You might be able to see in the light there the different weights in those heads. There's a 2.1 gram, which is up the top there, the really small weight all the way down to a 3.3 and then a 5.5 gram of these ones at the bottom here. This much heavier weight in there, hopefully you can see that. And I'm just fishing these really, really slowly and picking off these brim that live under these ships. And there's big keel systems on these. Some of them have got two big deep keels and that throws out a shadow under the water as well as the boat shadow so I'm just sort of parking up with stealth a little bit off from the side and tossing in 
right up against the edge of the ship and just dropping it down in the shadows. I'll give you a look at how I'm doing. And often there's big schools, huge teams of these brim, like you know, 20 or 30 brim in there. So as soon as there's any bait presented, it's just on for all of them and they're just competing over it. So you know, some of the time I'm missing the hook up, there's a tap tap and I go to set the hook, I miss it, and then all the brim come in and chase after it. Again, it's heaps of fun. That stealth's really key, so I'm just cruising in with my electric and just sitting in the tide. I really like it when the tide's filling. You've got water running past these ships. I'm just throwing up tide, bringing it back. Supernatural presentation with the prawn. And most of these ships are covered in brim. It's just about watching your line really closely. Not being too impatient to rip it back and then just slowly fishing it. There they go, they're onto it already. Not even paying attention and they're all over it. See if I can show you how it works. Yep, there we go. That's it. Oh. <laughs> I'm blaming myself. Anytime I lose a fish, I'm blaming myself. Just feeding it a bit hard. I've, I've pulled more than a handful this morning, so I'm getting a little bit eager once I set that hook and it's on. Really, once they're away from the keel, you're pretty right. Jumping ships is heaps of fun. I mean, the brim are small at this point. Wait for that big, that big beasty one to come out and smack it. But uh, heaps of fun, all the, all the same. Teaches you a lot about just how to watch your line and what to look for with those bites. Keep going. Here's a better one. Oh, it's a good take. Great stuff. Right down the hatch, take a look at this. That's how you want the take to happen, look at that. He doesn't even want to give it up. He's got, <laughs> he's got the prawn still stuck in his... Oh, I'm taking the hook out and the prawn stayed in there. He's not letting the prawn go. There we go. There's the extraction. There you go, buddy. Yep. There you go. There you do it. I'm just watching that line, eh? And Mate, they're hopping all over it, even without moving it. Like, there's no need to retrieve it with any hops or anything, really, until you get well out from the boat to try and entice a strike if you haven't got one. And they're just climbing all over it. You can see the darker colour on this brim. Like, the water is super clear, but they live in these shadows. They've got nice dark, nice dark backs on them. And... There's very little movement in this thing, like the little tail that's wobbling there, it's barely anything that comes up in the water. It's more about this profile. It's just such a perfect imitation of a little shrimp. And there's not a lot of little shrimp profiles around like this. Like, you know, Rio made some tiny little fly sort of things years ago um, that sort of resemble a, a shrimp of this size, but they're very hard to find now. Um, these little prawn imitations, these little shrimps, 
are just perfect for this sort of fishing. So I'm just going to give this a half an hour this morning, just hit 20 boats and see what happens, but I'm sort of pulling one or two off each boat. And then after that I, I, I sort of see that they get a little bit timid, they get a little bit spooked. That's why I'm trying to rip them out as quick as I get them, you know. So there's not too much spooking going on once they hook up. Hook up, rip it out, get onto the next one, see if you can double up on a, on a ship. I can see these bringing here. Coming in with the sun behind the boat, you can see just about everything, eh? You can see the brim sitting underneath it. They're right up, tucked hard up against it. Jeez. Here they go, there's about three of them out there competing. Come on, oh. See what happens, come on. Oh, still going. <laughs> They're still after it. So, it's so much fun. Yep, oh. Oh, they're following up all the way to the boat. Grab it, got him. <laughs> I'll watch that one come up, almost kiss the hull of the boat for that. And I'll just drop it back down when he turned and he turned back around. They, they're so aware of what's going on. He had his back turned to it when I dropped it. And uh, as soon as that happened, he's like, yep, you're actually mine. <laughs> which it makes sense like oh that is so cool make sure I'm not going to touch this boat try to be as respectful as I can I'm not hitting any, any yachts or boats that have got put residence on them or anything I'm just doing it super quiet but uh mate it is so much fun Like I said, you just, you can learn a lot about your lure fishing doing this style of stuff. Look at that fish. A lot about lure fishing, how to present something slowly, you know, those more subtle finesse style presentations. And then just visually the fact that you can, you can watch all this happen, you can eye the brim in as you come into it if you've got the sun behind the boat from the other side and you approach the shadow side, it's so visual. And the brim are used to feeding on little shrimp and things that are trying to hide up next to the boat. They're constantly like turning sideways and nudging bait around the edges of these yachts. So supernatural, the brim sees it coming up to the edge of this, this tinny and uh, didn't spot me with my rod. See if I can show you a little bit more of this. I'm drifting back onto this one, I sort of missed it. Let's see what happens here. It's a much bigger boat. Might happen straight away. Yep, they're on that. They're fighting over it, eh? I got it. Tap, 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 tap. Got it. Yep. Oh, so good. <laughs> Beautiful yellow fins. Spike the bejesus out of me every time. <laughs> well, I would love to know what your techniques are for handling these things. Because I just get, my hands get shredded up brim fishing, eh? Go back there so I can have a quick go at your brother before you tell him. Oh, they're all over it. They've seen me. Just seen them spook off and take off down underneath. Yeah, I could see them all taking off. I'm just scaring them, eh? When you get this close, you're too close. And you'll just see them sort of dive for the depths and then you, you really, your chances are reduced. But you can circulate, like I could hit all 20 or 30 of these yachts and then, you know, start back at the, at the first one again and get it all happening again, really. just sort of need a little bit of time to reset, just forget what happened and uh, come back and present this prawn to them again. And obviously when you've got a shadow cast from the early light, like you, you're ticking a couple of extra boxes, you've got that early light, that start of the morning, super calm and much bigger shadow presentation. It's really when the sun gets really high in the sky and that shadow comes right underneath it, it's a little bit harder to get in there and to get that bite but I think that's where these prawns are going to come into their own. Yep. Come. 
God, yeah. <laughs> right. That thing was that keen on it, it hit it about six times. Come in, buddy, come in, buddy. Oh, look at that. So good. Look at that. And there's more in there too. I reckon I'm going to get onto a couple more if I can quit spooking them. I reckon I can find one in there and get another one. Have a look, this. Come on, boys. Just jump on it. Yep. Tick, 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 tick. Got it. Yes. Literally can see under this boat. I'm watching these brim coming out and grabbing it. And you might be like, mate. Get over it, they're tiny, but I don't really care. It's a lot of fun, eh? It's so good, this visual style. I'm just watching, I'm watching the edges of these boats, and some of these boats I'm coming up to have got like little splash marks up beside the edges, so I know the brim have been feeding along the edges this morning. Just gives you a heap of confidence when you see that. Little splash marks. On the edges, you know that they've been crunching stuff as they sort of swim along the edges. Bait tries to get down through the system, hiding along the edges of these big ships. It's um, it just feels like it's all coming together. And look, it's not just these big structures where these things are going to work. I think these things have got some fantastic applications. They're going to catch a whole load of fish, like the tarpon are going to get all over these things. And even bass, you know, shut down bass, super, super finesse presentation. I just think these things are going to just smash it across the board. So I want to try and show you once the, once the weed beds have filled up and they're sunken, I want to show you what you can do with these things over the tops of the weed. Chasing brim, even flathead, things like that. Um, Trevally are even going to smash them. So hopefully I can bring you some of that today as well. slow if the fish is slow that didn't take very long at all straight in there beautiful stuff just come in out of the wind it's got the wind sort of got up out in the main area so decided I'll just try and hide out of it for a little bit hopefully it changes it's predicted to change today so hopefully it's going to change and then uh, be able to get back out there oh it's just a little prawn lure yeah tiny little prawn Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. around these shadows, the edges of these shadows, and I can see it all happening now. The sun's really high and they're still coming all the way out of the out of the shadows into the open light. To grab it, take a look at that. Yep, yep, mom. 
right in under that uh, that big yacht. It was the first time I'd even tried to skip cast with one of these lures, but boy, it just shot straight in there. Got deep in underneath that, that boat. Mate, that must be a dozen for the session, easy. about 30 seconds didn't move it and just let the wind sort of just slowly drag my line to keep the lure in action and mate, this is a lot of fun <laughs> this is heaps of fun eh? so I've tried to get out of the wind but really what I wanted to do is is come in here and show you like this is middle of the day stuff now the winds up out in the main areas the main channel usually this bite period starts to slow during the middle of the day but this is one of the key features of this little prawn these MMD soft prawns I think these lures are going to extend your bite window they've just got such a small subtle profile and their presentation just matches it so perfectly I think that's the key to these lures is that you're going to be able to get fish later in the day with these things so many of the brim tournament guys are going to have these with them and that's when they're gonna they're gonna switch over to them um, you know whether they use them right through the tournament or as that bite slows and it gets really hard to pull a brim these things even with the light right above um, they're just that good of a presentation that I reckon they can get that slow bite and uh, convert a couple, couple more fish during that later part of your session and because you can fish them so slowly, especially these really lightly weighted ones, the way they just fade like that, they're just sitting in front of the brim for so long that when there's a couple of brim around these edges of these structures, after a while they're just like, all right, I'll have a crack. And the tiny little Gamagatsu hook's super sharp. You just get that little nip and it's on. It's great fishing. Anyway, the sun's, the sun's high, like I said. I'm gonna come in here and fish around these structures and hopefully catch a few more and talk you through a couple of the little techniques that help get the little bite during that, that later period of the day. Yep, I'm on again, here we go, it's a better one too. Yep. Oh, slightly better. Mate, there's, there's a couple of them down there, eh? McMullen is gonna make a hell of a lot of fishermen happy with this thing. I think um, for someone learning to lure fish, and uh, getting their head around you know, how to present a lure, how to extend a bite window, or you know, fish during the middle of the day. This thing provides a lot of those options. And I'm, I'm so glad that there's three different weights because for me, fishing with the super lightly weighted one as that bite is slowing up during the middle of the day, I reckon that's the way to go. But for someone just learning who doesn't have like a really light, light setup, or if they're fishing for bass in a lake, or, uh, or a dam where they want to get down to schooled fish that are sort of shut down and they want to just wriggle this thing along the bottom, you've got those heavier weights. So my suggestion with these is, you know, unless you're running really light line and a seven foot rod, um, you know, you, you probably want those heavier two weights or the middle weight. If you're a land-based fisherman, you probably want to be fishing with that middle weight at the very lightest. This one, the super light one, I think it's like 2.1 grams. Yeah, 2.1 grams. They're the weights there. This one is for someone who can, you know, position themselves and, and really slow things down and, and skip cast the, the little baits in there or just be in the right position to get the cast in. If you're trying to get distance, you're not really looking to use the 2.1 grammer. Or if you're fishing with a heavier setup, you probably, you know, if you're fishing eight pound or something like that, chasing bass or trevally, you want to be fishing with that middle weight or even a little bit heavier, I reckon. You know, when I'm throwing this in there, if I'm overshooting my mark, because it's the, the, the lead is inside the rubber, or the plastic, you're not getting that tink tink on the pontoon or anything, it's not spooking the fish, it just bumps off it really soft 
and um, I can see the brim, they're not even moving. So it's one of the best parts about a hidden weight system, which is what these have got. G'day. Don't miss it, eh? It's so small, this little thing's so small that they just get it all the way down. God, it's good fun. Take a look at that. That's a better fish. Just stacked in here, eh? That's the bite that you get most of the time. She goes right the way down. They just, they're so aggressive on the take. They're used to sucking these things in straight away, so you're not catching them on the outside of the face. It's a good hook up. I mean, that's a legal fish. It's just one after the other. I can see that. I can see that fish in there. He's turned around. He's swimming down to it now. I want to go in and test my nerves around the edges of these uh, these boardwalks, eh? Hey? Because there's a lot more, like, oyster encrusted stuff deep in there. I reckon I can skip into the shallows over the rocks. Might pull the brim out of there. He's going. Guts, no glory, let's go. Yep, here he comes, here he comes. See him? Grab it, grab it, grab it, grab it. Got it, got it. Oh! Oh, it's so visual! Love it! Just saw his big silverback come out off that pylon, eh? That was epic. Just saw him kick in a, in a top gear and come screaming out for that. It's probably, it's, it's the only really, you know, it's, it's only a small drawback is that the, the plastic here is so soft on these plastics that I've well, probably caught about a dozen fish on this now and the, the front of it, because the, the weight is so close to the front of the plastic, it's started to just come loose a little bit. And most of that's been me trying to get it out of the, the fish's mouth, to be honest. I'm massaging that plastic, trying to get it out of the mouth of the fish. Um, but yeah, it's sort of t torn up a little bit. Um, but I can, to be honest, I can hack that because if I'm getting a dozen fish on a lure, I'm pretty, I'm pretty damn happy when, especially when, it's, you know, six or seven of them come from the middle of the day. But hopefully you can see, it's had a working over, like, maybe you can see all those dimples from all the brim's teeth all over it. God, it's good fun. <laughs> There's so much to be said for... You know, chasing fish in the middle of the day, like full gentleman's hours, you come out and visually be able to watch it all happen where they eye it in, they've got a long time to look at it. Super clear water, and um, I'm just watching them turn, look at it, kick into gear, and come grab it. It's, it's awesome. Often at this point, at the point of the day, you throw something in there and you, you're more likely to spook them. You know, you just see them dive down out of the road, but it's all happening. Yeah, so 
so the the, um, the gear that I'm using I've just got like a little six pound setup and I'm running some six pound fluorocarbon of about a meter and a half but in these conditions it would have been better if I, I reckon if I had my little four pound fluoro right through set up um, just because it's so clear Kissing the pylon, eh? Just moving up and down, kissing the pylon. Have a look at this. Little grunting trevally. Oh, look at that, eh? Full kiss in the pylon, and uh, it came out and just sat right beside it and watched it. My heart was in my mouth. <laughs> it's the sickest feeling. And it just smashed that little prawn. Like gear, awesome fun. And tight, like heavy cover, stupid stuff. Those oysters, I was bound to lose that. He's barking at me now, eh? Mate, when you're chasing brim and you, and you hook one of these bangers, so sick. Look at that tail. Don't you love the way they built these things? Even these tiny little ones, great fun. Go, buddy. This brim is plenty under here. Just gonna pop this over the edge, hopefully. There we go. See, bang, got it, got it. Awesome. Mate, I don't know if that's a brim or what that is, but there was, there's a team of them there, eh? Right? Beautiful stuff. So gold, and look at the colours on that. And that's a decent that well, that's a decent size fish. There you go, he's got a saddle. Oh I could only see one, but there was like there would have been 20 underneath, like deep. A lot of them are sitting deep now. The sun's so high. So one of the other techniques you could use, I'm sure of it, would be to get, I'll show you. These ones are like 5.9 grams. Have a look at that, there's, there's a big lead. It basically fills that whole head chamber. And I reckon you could use those during the middle of the day to get right to the bottom and just even slow roll them back like you would a cranker crab or you know any of those baits that during the middle of the day when you're trying to get deep and just sit it in front of them barely any movement just like a little trickle tickle of the rod tip would be enough to get them to bite those during the middle of the day off the bottom I reckon grab it grab it go oh I missed it they're still there they're still looking at it grab it boys even just off the rocks, middle of the day there's like some intermittent light cast down onto these rocks and the shadows and that. You throw it in there, you can't see a thing and then the brim just appear and just rise up out of nothing. Come out of the rocks and then they're all fighting over it. Here we go again. It's going on again. I think I'm on. I can feel the ticks. Yeah, I'm on again. Oh, there's about 10 of them, mate. They're all swimming out, the little ones first, but come on. 
There's some big, there's some big brim in here, right? <laughs> Now I got it. Come here. Oh, that's awesome. Another sick little Trev. There's more Trevs down there underneath it, eh? Look at the colours on that. That little yellow fin, look at that. God, they're gorgeous. Yep, I'm on. Good, good fish. That's a better fish. Pumping out, keep it out of that pile. It's a big brim, this one. Yeah, it's the one that I've been waiting to get for the day. This will do me. He's got a he's got a team of giants coming out with him. Look at this fish. What a beauty. That's the one that I wanted. Stay on, big dog. Look at the size of that man. Look at that beast. Oh. Look at that beast. There's a 35 forker, I reckon. What a beauty, eh? Mate, these little prawns are insane. Look at the mouth on that thing. Look at that. Big teeth. That is so cool. Wow, I love my jacks and big flathead and you know so many estuary species, trevally fishing, bass, saratoga, but these really big brim, they've definitely got something that I can appreciate, I love it eh? The way they team up, so cool. Look at that, they just slide across the surface, these little light ones. They just scoot in there, eh? They're so good for getting in undercover. Yep, oh. It's a brim. Just under there, grab that. Try this on for size. Oh, yeah, yeah. Go on, grab that. Just grab it, he's got it. Got him, yes! Mate, can you see the brim coming out with it? I don't think you're going to pick that up in the video, but this is just nuts. <laughs> if you're looking to get into some brim fishing, I don't reckon you can go past these things if you're going to try and do it really light line, full finesse style, and um, fishing around these structures. We're going to leave it there, I reckon, but this isn't the last you're going to see of these lures. Um, I'll definitely be doing some more. I'm going to chase some, some bass with them, and uh, maybe some flathead stuff maybe a couple of different environments that we haven't touched on today but i hope you've enjoyed this video and if you've got any questions put it in the comments and i'll get back to you i'd love to hear your thoughts on these things yourselves if you've been fishing them how, le how you like to fish them thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video just one more car that'll do it go boy grab that yep yep got it <laughs> <laughs> Come out. It's not a bad one either. Get around this side of the pile on your dog. I saw him right up against the the pontoon, the little dock. So sick. Crazy. Crazy. Yes. Get on him, boys.